Hello everyone, my name is Anish Gopala and I'm happy to partner with the Santa Clara County Library District to present to you the battle for the Atlantic during the Second World War. So in 1941, at the start of the war, imports accounted for over 70% of the UK's food, then Britain, and the Germans who were fighting against the British decided to try to use this to their advantage. They did this by sinking as much cargo, as much tonnage of ships coming into Britain as they could. The idea was if we can just starve Britain into surrender, we can end the war. So U-boats were one of the ways in which they did this. And the idea was that if we can destroy enough ships, Britain will have to surrender. So U-boats were basically submarines which could move under the water and quickly resurface, destroy, um, destroy a ship, and then just move right back down. And they were extremely instrumental to the German war effort or the Nazi war effort. In order to counter the U-boat threat, the British built an intelligence service known as Bletchley Park. So Bletchley Park was a military base. It, there was an actual physical base, but it was not the type of military base that we generally constitute to this sort of naval warfare-esque uh, design. Instead, it was a code-breaking center. The Nazi U-boats heavily relied on communication for their tactics. The idea was if we can crack the codes that they used to communicate, we can win the war. The German codes were called Enigma codes because they were just that hard to crack. And they were never fully cracked during the war. But uh, a machine was built to help us decipher as much as possible. So we were able to decipher so much that we could start finally sinking U-boats by reading their transmissions to one another and figuring out which cruisers are going to be hit. So these were three men who were in who were in charge and helped out with the code breaking at Bletchley Park. So there was Alan Turing, whose name is most well known. Then we have Gordon Welchman and Bill Toot. They were all instrumental in the German in the British war effort and stopping the German war machine. And without them, the Nazis would have had a really good shot at winning World War II, arguably. So the Enigma machine, the design was originally conceived by Alan Turing, and that's why he's kind of the most famous, most well-known of the three. So the so it was actually a machine that you could feed Enigma codes into, and out would come the translated English, uh, the English language on a paper, basically. And so with that, they were able to figure out what ships were going to be hit. And this was instrumental. Again, it was instrumental to the British war effort. So Bletchley Park was extremely important for the British to to help win the British the war effort. But there were a lot of other ways that the British were able to solve this issue of a sink of the Germans sinking like too much tonnage of food coming into Britain. One of the ways they did this was better convoy tactics. So a convoy is when a group when as a lot of merchant ships clump together in the sea and they have an armed perimeter around them, an armed ex escort of fully fledged battle cruisers, which will help defend them. And with that, you can escort so many ships into Britain and get that much food in. Uh, advanced radar, advanced radar systems. So with radar systems, we can help predict or, or radar systems will help predict where these U boats or, or these planes are going to destroy cruisers and with that we can send or I should say the British can send help. Brute force. So the Liberty ships were a primarily American contribution to the British war effort. So it's kind of not it's well known actually that the Germans were sinking a lot of food and Britain desperately needed food right to feed its uh, its population. So the Americans figured out that they could use essentially kind of capitalism to help win the war effort. They decided we're going to build more ships than the Germans can sink. That was the idea. Instead of 
sinking the German U-boats, we're just going to overpower them with more ships than they can sink. And these ships were called Liberty ships. And they were built in America. I say they were uh, kind of very representative of capitalism's use in the war effort because these ships were built by individual designers competing against each other, individual ship designers. And so they were not well built. Each ship in of itself was not really some, court, so, so, some sort of miracle design. They were not well built, but you could build a lot of them. And each of them were, sh were filled, were, uh, were shipping tons and tons of food to Britain. And this was absolutely instrumental. In fact, without the Liberty ships, they, they, may, have, they may have lost the war. And finally, Germany's lack of industry. So after World War I, the Treaty of Versailles horribly crippled Germany's uh, access to war materials and an actual army. Their army was limited to 100,000 men. Which, at that, which is an incredibly small amount for an army, uh, especially at the time. So due to this lack of industry and these horrible uh, reparations that Germany had to pay b earlier before World War II and the Nazis takeover of Germany before that, uh, they did not have much of an army and they didn't have much of a navy either. And due to that, they had a, much, they had a terribly hard time actually fighting the war. And it's incredible that they got as far as they did, almost winning the war. So the Atlantic Gap was basically created when um, American and British forces, naval and air forces, were able to kind of push the Germans, the German U-boats, into the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. And slowly the Atlantic Gap was kind of, sh was sh it kind of shrunk and shrunk to the point where eventually it was completely eliminated. But this remaining Nazi existence was kind of like uh, was kind of like a cockroach infestation. It was very annoying to British and American shipping trying to move through the Atlantic. Eventually, it was destroyed, as I said, but still, it did prove very irritating to to the Allied forces. So, in summary, Germany tried to starve Britain into surrender. However. Uh, Britain remained firm and they fought back through a, a bunch of techniques that we just talked about, right? The Bletchley Park contributions to the war, the convoy tactics, i.e. they grouped their merchant ships together and they defended those ships, they created a perimeter, advanced radar systems to predict where the next uh, hit is going to go, essentially. Liberty ships, the mainly American contribution to the war effort, where they built tons and tons of ships and just moved them across the Atlantic. More ships than the Germans can sink. And finally, Germany's lack of industry, which the Treaty of Versailles horribly crippled the German army and navy. And with American resources, German U-boats were slowly pushed into the mid-Atlantic gap, as it's called. And then from there, they were eliminated. And with that, Germany had a very small chance at winning World War II. This is a bibliography. These are the sources I use to find my information. Thank you for listening. I hope you learned something new in this video, and that is all. Thank you again.